Remember the first time you picked up your bass? You gazed deeply at the neck, and you instantly knew exactly where to place your fingers to make amazing music that would change the world! Yeah, me either. Because when you first look at this thing, it's just like, come on, there's all these fucking notes. How are you supposed to come up with a bass line or find the notes to a song? Looking at every single note on the neck all at once like that is like looking at a mountain of random Lego bricks and trying to build this. Good luck. But if you limit yourself to specific bricks that work perfectly together, like in a pre-made Lego kit, it's way easier to build something cool without your brain exploding. And that's exactly what scales do in music. So instead of an overwhelming mountain of every note ever, a scale gives you a kit, a group of notes that are guaranteed to work together so you can play cool stuff without any notes that sound wrong. Every song you've ever heard uses scales to keep its notes organized. Master of Puppets uses the minor scale to sound dark. Pride and Joy uses the Mixolydian scale to sound bluesy. Sunshine of Your Love uses the blues scale to sound also bluesy. So different scales give different vibes, and eventually you need to know them all to be a well-rounded musician. But where do you start, and how the hell do you actually use them? There's one scale that every beginner should learn first. A scale that's used in every musical style, that forms the foundation of all the music theory you'll ever need to learn, that your mommy sang to you before bed. That's right, we're starting with the major scale, the most used scale in music, and it sounds like... Well, that's what you can do with a scale once you master it. But for a scale to help you navigate the neck and build better bass lines, you need to nail the five scale steps. I couldn't think of a better name. And I can't just tell you, hey, the notes of a C major scale are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Go be a virtuoso. Trying to rock a scale with that little direction is like opening a huge Lego kit and not reading the instructions. Not that anyone's ever done that. Because the instruction manual is what tells you exactly how to put the pieces of the Lego kit together. And as if there is no end to the perfection of this analogy, that's what a scale shape does for your scales. Shows you exactly how to put the notes together on the neck. Once you can nail a shape by heart, you can use it to build anything from bass lines to killer fills to beautiful solos. And I'll show you exactly how to do that in steps four and five. But it all starts with step one, the center shape. A shape so powerful that every bass student has had to learn it since Leo Fender gave birth to the universe. But there's one common mistake that has beginners make this shape harder for themselves than it needs to be. Because any human person should be able to learn this in like a day, but make this mistake and you'll struggle for weeks. See if you can spot what it is and watch my fretting hand. As we fret this, middle, pinky, index, middle, pinky, index, ring, Pinky, then same thing back down. Pinky, ring, index, pinky, middle, index, pinky, middle. So where do you think people go wrong with this? It's not using microshifting. Microshifting is the key to playing bass lines and scales smoothly, no matter how big your hands are or how developed your stretch is. But when you show most people this shape, they think they have to hold their hand all the way across all four of the frets. But almost nobody can hold that stretch when they first start playing, not even weirdos with giant hands like me. And that's where microshifting saves the day. So using the same fingering I showed earlier, which is all written out for you in the free PDF in the description, you just let your hand move within the position for comfort. And all of a sudden you can play the same fingering as a giant handed pro, just with a little more wiggling around. And your stretch skills will come naturally with time. What won't come naturally is actually making music with the scale shape, which is why you need to work through all five steps. Because at this point, you've got shape, that's great, but it won't be that useful if you can only play it in this one spot. That's why you need step two, playing the shape on any starting note anywhere on the neck. So far, you've learned to play the shape starting on the third fret of the A string, which is a C. If you don't know that's a C, then for God's sake, watch my Money Notes video. And we call that a C major scale. C is the starting note and major is the type of scale. But different songs have different starting notes. If someone calls Brown Eyed Girl in G at a jam, you need to reference that major scale shape from G, not C, otherwise you're gonna be playing the wrong notes, like this. So for Brown Eyed Girl, you need a G major scale, that means you need to find a G, like on the third fret of the E string, and just move your shape over to start on that note, like this. And voila, you have a G major scale, a major scale starting on G, and you can successfully impress your friends with Brown Eyed Girl. Hey, where did we go? Hey dude, let's play Stir It Up in A major. Okay, so find your starting note on the E or the A string so you have enough strings to finish the shape. Let's do an A on the fifth fret of the E string. Play your same scale shape, same fingering. 
And of course you still have to learn the actual baseline now, but the scale will help you learn it faster and remember it more easily. You can use this shape almost anywhere, but there are two hidden notes where students think they can't use it, so they miss out on the full potential of the shape. Why are these two notes hidden? To build artificial suspense. But seriously, check it out. Here's the shape starting on the third fret. Scoot it to the second fret, easy. Don't forget to micro shift if you need to. Scoot it again to the first fret. Oh, wait a second, what do you do with your index finger? So the index finger notes ended up on the open strings, and this is still the same shape as the dots prove beyond a shadow of a whisper of a doubt, but it changes your fingering since you don't need to fret an open string. Although if you dummy fret it a couple times with the index on the open strings, you can help convince yourself it really is the same shape. But now you can play B flat major as well as F major starting on the first fret of the E string, and so you can flawlessly play bass virtuoso Jaco Pistorius' version of the chicken in B flat starting on the first fret. Okay, you may also need to practice for a while. But let's be honest, the scale shape only has eight notes, and there's only so much music you can get out of that tiny box. I mean, imagine a Lego kit with only eight bricks. Just sucks. But unlike Legos, there's a simple way to make the bricks of your scale shape multiply, a trick that'll get you some basic beginner level ups on the shape, plus some more notes to make music with in steps four and five. All you need is the copy paste technique. So what the hell does that mean? Well, the shape you now know and love is made of three chunks, the first string, the second string, and the third string. And because shapes are easily movable on bass, you can copy paste any of those scale chunks. This can be a lifesaver, because imagine you're playing a song in D major, meaning you're using your major scale shape starting on a D. That limits you from playing any of those really beefy low notes down at the bottom of the bass, which is a bummer if you want to kick things into heavy gear. But check it out, let's play the scale from top to bottom, so starting on the high D and landing on the low D. Now you can literally copy paste these top two chunks and get more scale notes down low. So you're playing the same scale shape just starting on the low D instead of the high D, and now you have the ammo to get uber heavy with low notes when the song calls for it. So why don't beginners figure this out on their own on day one, or even day 100? Because there will usually be missing chunks. In this case, you can't copy paste the final chunk, bah, bah, because you're out of strings. But it doesn't matter. It's the same notes, same relationships, same comparison to Legos somehow. Or say you're jamming in A major. It's time for one of your classic bass fills, but your classic bass fill is just getting lost and embarrassed. Fear not, those days are over, because you can copy paste the shape upwards to get some tasty notes outside of your usual bass zone. So we start the scale from the bottom, and now those first two chunks started on the low A, you can copy paste to start on the high A, which gives you these extra notes. And again, you can't finish the scale, banana, because you're out of strings, but it's enough coverage to let you rip something cool. But how do you actually come up with musical ideas using those extra notes? People often learn scales up to this step and still don't really get what the point is, but they're all making the same rookie scale mistake that you're about to not make. What's the mistake? They didn't learn how to steal like a bassist. So you know that famous expression, good artists copy, great artists steal? which has been credited to like 20 different people who all stole it from each other. For us, this means learning to shamelessly copy and play existing melodies and bass lines that use the major scale. This is the most powerful way to make the scale yours and understand it with musical depth, not just as a pattern you learned from a video. Cause here's the thing, you already know the major scale deep in your bones. You've heard infinity songs that use it. Even when you were a wee little pre-bassist, you were hearing this melody everywhere in children's songs, holiday music, pub sing-alongs. I don't know why you were in a pub as a child, but I'm not here to judge. Do you want a sip of wine? That's really good news, because it means if you can connect what you just learned with your fingers to what you already have deep in your ear, you can actually use the scale to make music. So here's the four step, steal like a bassist process. Step one, pick a melody that's deep in your bones and ears already. We'll use When the Saints Go Marching In, which is a great tune to know for jazz and New Orleans style gigs. And the PDF in the description has a mega list of simple melodies that most people already have memorized and could sing. Step two, pick any starting note and play the scale shape starting on that note to get your ear oriented. I'm gonna use B flat, but it doesn't matter. Step three, play the root note again and sing it to yourself out loud. Bad singing is encouraged and then sing the melody starting on that note. Oh, when the saints. Finally, step four, you wanna find those notes on the bass inside the scale shape. 
So you know to start on the root note for O because we gave that away. So now you want O oh, when. So we're gonna find something that sounds like that. O oh, when. No, not quite. O oh, when. No, I went too far. O oh, when. O oh, when the saints. O oh, when. Hey, there we go. The first note to the third note. Okay, so now I want O oh, when the. O oh, when the. Yeah, that sounded pretty close. Saints. That sounds close too. O oh, when the saints. Ta-da! There you have it. You've linked your innate sense of the sound and musicality of the major scale to where your fingers wiggle. But there's one thing that might throw you when you try to do this on your own. When the Saints was kind of easy because it started on the first note of the scale, so you had a guaranteed win for finding that first note. But not all melodies start on the first note of the scale. And that's why in the PDF in the description, I've given you the starting note in the scale for each melody. Eventually you can figure this out on your own, but it's a huge stumbling block for beginners. So you're welcome. What's that? You want to subscribe to Bass Buzz to show your appreciation? I mean, I guess if you want to. But you go through the same four steps. Let me show you with the sound of music. The hills are alive. It's like the most classic major scale film in cinema history. So step one, you picked a melody, done. Step two, pick a starting note. I'll use E and play the scale shape to get yourself oriented. Now step three, you want to play whatever the first note of the melody is, which the chart says should be the fifth note. So find that note, one, two, three, four, five, and try singing the melody. The hills are alive. Great. Now step four, same as before, you're going to start on that same note and try to find the melody from there. The hills, the hills, too far. The hills, the hills. Great. The hills are alive. Da, 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 da. Hey, we found it. It's almost like I've played this before. Da, 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 da. Listen, I get it. You don't want to play corny melodies. You want to play very cool music for grown-ups who are subscribed to Bass Buzz. And that's why most people don't take the time to do this. But not only will stealing like a bassist help you get ahead of those stupid most people with linking your ear and fingers, it's also a killer cheat code for creating more melodic bass lines and solos. Check it out. The band's rocking. The band leader just told you to take a solo. You're panicking. But all you do is find your scale shape. Find the melodies you know. Oh, when the saints, the hills are alive. And then you can just doodle around those. No, this is not just a dorky YouTube bass teacher trick. This is how real world-class musicians think. Here's Jaco Pistorius again. The hills are alive. Here's the rest, wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> that happened in real life. But what if you're still struggling to make up your own stuff, just copying existing melodies? Maybe that feeling is creeping in again of looking at a huge pile of Legos and someone saying, build me something amazing right now. And that's why step five is a simple trick that makes it easy to pull your own music from the scale, whether you need to improvise an amazing solo. <laughs> or just jam simple bass lines with a band. And it's called the bingo method. The bingo method is embedded in all kinds of music from Bach to Bob Marley to Beach Boys. Did you catch the trick? These seemingly amazing feats of musical fusion are based on the bingo method, which just means making simple number patterns from scale notes. Here's what I mean. When you learned your scale shape oh so many minutes ago, you learned the notes in order, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is great for practicing scales, not so great for making music. But it's so easy to make it into music, just make up a different pattern of numbers. Here's an example, one, two, three, one. So I'm just playing the first, second, third, and then back to the first notes of the scale. And I imagine so far you're unimpressed because that just sounds like flail jaca, and I promised you cool grown-up music. But here's the trick, you take that one tiny little idea and move it through the scale by adding one to each number. So start with one, two, three, one, then you go two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, you get the idea. And if I chain all that together and play it fast to impress you, it sounds cool, right? And hey, our old friend Jaco Pastorius visits the video a third and final time. He played a very similar one, two, three, four pattern at the end of his solo version of America the Beautiful. Not only does this give you a pathway to infinity musical ideas, it's a totally different technical workout than playing the scale in order. You can use the same basic fingering approach, but the string crossing and the plucking are gonna be super different, and patterns like this make amazing speed workouts. You could pick a pattern for the week, set a metronome goal, and put in five to 10 minutes a day for massive technique gains. But hey, maybe you're not trying to shred like Jocko. The bingo method is still super useful for connective tissue type bass lines that we play in real life. Let's make up another pattern 
completely spontaneously and unplanned. How about uh, 8765? And let's use it to link two chords together, which is what we do most of the time as bass players in songs. Let's link a B and an E together, which are the one and four chord in the key of B major. So without this pattern, you might just play one, two, three, four, one, and then go to the next chord, which would be boring. But if you flow from the first chord to the second chord with the pattern, eight, seven, six, five to the four chord, you could get something like this. Still think you're not creative enough to come up with these? You can literally play bingo with a random number generator and come up with some patterns. Let's try this, okay. Five, one, two, two. Let's see what happens. Find those notes. Five, one, two, two. Play with rhythms. Add one to the numbers. So instead of five, one, two, two, six, two, three, three. The secret to really nailing scales is repetition beyond what you can get from a single video or practice session. And that's why my Beginner to Badass course gives you a metric ton of reinforcement on how the major and minor scales are used in songs and how you can use them to create your own bass lines and melodies. Click on this very subtly placed link to learn more about that. I'm gonna go finish building that Lego guitar.